BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 159, How to Treat Hypothyroidism. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Hello, this week we're talking about treatment uh, modalities and treatment strategies for dealing with people that have thyroid problems. In our previous podcast, uh, which you can find on the web, we discussed people that had problems with thyroids, how you recognize that, how you identify it, what lab tests tell you, uh, what symptoms and signs people present with that Mm -hmm. would tell a physician, I'm looking at a thyroid that's malfunctioning. So we concluded by saying, come back this week and we'll talk about once they've decided they're looking at Mm -hmm. thyroid malfunction, there are treatments that they can provide. Mm -hmm. And because we've been doing this series on hormone replacements, part of the series that we've done, we always focus on risks and side effects. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the treatments and then let's talk about any risks or side effects and what you do with those if you discover. All right. So my favorite treatment for low thyroid, to mm-hmm. replace low thyroid, is called Armour Thyroid. Mm-hmm. It's been around forever. It is uh, pig thyroid, but it's medical pigs. They're fed... Doctor <laughs> pigs. Yeah, medical pigs, like <laughs> the pigs that are used for um, for artificial... Um, heart valves. Heart valves and, and, mm-hmm. and, arti- and artificial collagen that we use for, for grafting. I mean, we use a lot of things from pigs. Mm-hmm that I guess many of their tissues are similar so these to These are just not your ours. regular barnyard pigs? No, these, these, are, are, raised these are raised as a medical pig. They're a medical, sent to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> they're fed well and they're not fed junk. They're very healthy pigs. And they're clean. And they're very clean, as clean yeah. as a pig could be. So, so Armour Thyroid is from pig thyroid because it's much like ours. And it's been used since the 30s, mm-hmm. and maybe even before that. So we've used this, we have a lot of, we have a lot of experience with it. It is something that I find to be more effective in women than other types of thyroid, other synthetic types. And it's an it's not a synthetic. No, it is not synthetic. It's a natural substance. It's a natural substance from a pig. Yeah. So it is one of the ways that I consider naturally treating Mm -hmm. the thyroid. It's oral. It's an oral tablet, and you should take it once in the morning on an empty stomach. So that's you. That's easy. As long as you can organize your life, you take it on an empty stomach, you don't drink coffee or take other drugs or eat for 20 minutes. So get in the shower. I mean, do something. Mm-hmm. But, but don't eat or drink coffee to destroy it. So by then, it's absorbed in the intestines. Okay. So that's the only, there's nothing that's perfect, but that's probably the biggest downside of taking armor is that you have all thyroid, actually. You have to wait a little bit before you you do anything else with your uh, intestinal tract. You can't take in any other food or mm-hmm. drink. Or other medicines. Or other medicines. If you have other morning pills that you take, you need to wait that 15 to 20 minutes. Right, that's absolutely okay. correct. So that's Armour Thyroid. I think it works better for women than um, other forms. When I have a male patient, I usually start with a different form of thyroid, which is Synthroid, also called Lavoxyl in the generic. And Synthroid is synthetic thyroid. It came about in uh, the late 40s, 50s, and it was one of the um, new drugs because we wanted to be all synthetic. We believed that everything that was made synthetically was better for us at the time. Mm-hmm. Now, now the pendulum's coming back. But at the time, Synthroid is just one thyroid hormone, T4. T4 is not the active form of thyroid. It is the inactive, but it can be made active within the cell. So I find that for some reason, men do better with Synthroid, so I try that first with them. Mm -hmm. I usually try brand because Lavoxyl can be high or low by 20% to be a generic. So I may not be giving the same dose, and that's very important to someone every month. They may get a different generic. So dosage regulation for treatment of thyroid is critical. It is critical. So for men, I start with Synthroid. Mm -hmm. Now, both of those those cases sometimes cross. Sometimes men don't get along with the Synthroid. They don't feel better. Their Mm -hmm. symptoms don't go away. So they may not be able to make 
T4 into the active form T3, so we, I switch them to armor thyroid. Okay. So, and vice versa. Some people on armor get feel like they get too much, or and we're going to talk about that, which side effects. So then I switch them to Synthroid, and most of them do very well on that. There are very few people that I have to keep trying different things. Mm -hmm. But when I do, I go to a compounding pharmacy, and they make a compounded T4, T3 that is similar to the Armour Thyroid, but it is compounded from vegetables. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a vegetable base. That's where they get their thyroid, just similar to how we get our estrogen and our testosterone from soy and yams. And I'm not sure what the what the vegetable is that they get the thyroid from. But so, so a compounding pharmacy is kind of like a drug factory. They have all these raw ingredients mm -hmm. that they pull and mix and match mm -hmm. and make a pill or a tablet or a liquid for my patients for your patients that's mm -hmm. specific to what you ask for. Right. And some people... And, and it's licensed and regulated and right. safe and all that. Yes, it is. And there are some, just like anything else, there are mm -hmm. some pharmacies that sneak through and they're not good. Mm -hmm. But the ones I use are awesome. Mm -hmm. And I've used them for years. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've not had any issues with them. So you have to trust your doctor <laughs> in which pharmacy you go to. Mm -hmm. But they'll suggest certain pharmacies and that's, and that's our job. Our job is to keep you safe. But in the instances that somebody can't find a thyroid that works for them, sometimes we use compounded. Okay. So, and that often works. Other times, we switch to another synthetic called Cytomel. Cytomel is only T3. It's very potent, it's very active, and it, it is a twice a day dose. So, I believe you should have T4 and T3, but if nothing works out there, then you can still get rid of your symptoms on, on Cytomel, which is just T3. That's my, my preference, mm -hmm. is to use both T4 and T3, mm -hmm. no matter how it comes. But, but in some cases, Cytomel is the only thing the patient can tolerate. Right. And then that's what I use. And, and when you say you get rid of your symptoms, you're doing symptom management and relief, or you're, you're actually solving the problem? Solving Is the problem. I mean, this prob all of those symptoms are from no thyroid okay. or low thyroid. Right. And the symptoms should mostly resolve immediately. And then over time, a few of them may take a little longer, like weight gain. I mean, if you gained weight for a year, then, or two 10 years, pill, gonna, yeah, two days on the pill is not going to bring you back to normal. It may get rid of some of the fluid that like you have. Like diet pills. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not really a diet pill, but if someone has trouble taking it, I say, pretend it's a diet pill because it does help your weight, it does right. help your metabolism, keeps you awake. Mm -hmm. I mean, not at night, it keeps you awake all day so that you don't get tired. Right. So those are the different forms of thyroid that we can use. We've already mm -hmm. talked about iodine as a supplement to help this or kelp as a supplement. And we, we have a thyroid supplement at our office that have all the tiny like zinc and selenium and other things that help the thyroid mm -hmm. and kelp. So we have those as well. But that's the first step. But the second step in replacement is to replace the thyroid itself. And you have to give enough to get the symptoms to resolve without causing side effects. And that's always the issue with every drug. When you say replace the thyroid, do they actually go in and take your thyroid out or do they <laughs> no. zap it with radiation? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean replace thyroid hormone. Okay. That's what I mean. The thyroid's still there. It just becomes very small and very mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. And that's one of that's always a benefit because some people have not only hypoactive thyroid but cysts on their thyroid. I do I do as well. And the better my thyroid su suppression of my thyroid drug medication suppresses my thyroid, mm -hmm. the smaller the cysts get. Okay. And that's good because if they get large then surgery is needed. Right. So it's very common to have someone with cysts on their thyroid, we ultrasound them to find that, especially in goiters, large thyroid. So, so the artificial thyroid, or not artificial, but replacement, because mm -hmm. armor is not artificial, uh, allows you to bypass the issue of cysts that are manufactured by your thyroid. Right, because it lets your thyroid sleep. It puts it to sleep. Mm -hmm. And it does the work of what the thyroid would do by giving you the medication. So the thyroid shrinks. Mm -hmm. It's not so hyperactive. And any cysts that it might have that aren't malignant get right. very small and 
sometimes just go away. Mm -hmm. So it's a resting of the thyroid. It's okay. not taking it out. All right. So the possible side effects of thyroid replacement medication. What are the kind of things? If, if I take it uh, and I come in and you say, well, how's it going? And I say, well, I think it's going all right, but. and then I Usually start. we get an email or a phone call first. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So This is happening. Generally, yeah. when people start thyroid, mm -hmm. any, any type, the first few days, they have an adjustment period. Right. So we warn them, the first mm -hmm. few days, you may have a slightly higher pulse, but if you have low thyroid, usually your pulse is 60 or low anyway. So you might have a slightly higher it's a pulse. a whole crocodile thing. And you might... <laughs> just, just lay like a reptile in the sun and don't move a whole lot. And right. Your pulse, pulse goes sluggish down. And, right. Yeah. That's kind of like... Yeah. That's a good picture for being with, without a thyroid. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how you feel. Yeah. So... That's so, <laughs> so basically your pulse will go up. That may feel funny, but it usually doesn't go up above 80. Mm -hmm. And so in the first few days, you're getting used to it. So there's a little hyperactivity or a little, mm -hmm. sometimes not. I mean, don't expect that. But if that happens, that doesn't necessarily mean the dose is too high or something's wrong. The first 48 hours generally is an adjustment site period. After that, if the pulse is at 90 or you're sweating, or you're hot all the time, or you're irritable, and you're then either when you when you typically are not when you typically are not yeah if these are <laughs> Some new are symptoms yeah, yeah if these are new symptoms right when uh, usually people on, that have hypothyroid are too tired to be all those things <laughs> but but if the, those yeah. happen so I go after home and my wife takes this stuff and she gets irritable I say you're back <laughs> 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 okay a new irritability. <laughs> That's not the primary symptom, though. It's usually a fast heart rate and sweating and heat. And that tells me that the dose is too high or the dose needs to be divided up during the day. So you get a little here and a little there. Mm -hmm. You just can't handle it all at once in the morning. Or it's the wrong kind of thyroid. So in general, if I am faced with that issue, then I can then change drugs change dose, decrease the dose, or I can divide up the dose that my patient has and say take one in the morning on an empty stomach and one at two o'clock in the afternoon. That should alleviate this issue. And so all of those are manipulations that doctors can do right. to make your thyroid medicine um, acceptable to you and not cause you any of these symptoms and, and, we're trying to relieve symptoms. most of these symptoms. are initial, like the first few days of adjustment when, you're, when your system has been out of balance for so long mm -hmm. and things are turning back on, right. you tend to notice them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a phenomenon called sensory adaptation where if you're under constant levels of stimulation, your uh, markers that tell you something's going on reset to zero. Like uh, in, your, in your skin, you have four cutaneous sensors, cutaneous skin level, hot, cold, touch, and pain. Mm -hmm. And so if you put your hand in a thing of cold water, initially it feels cold, mm -hmm. uh, but then it adjusts and feels normal, uh -huh. and you reset to zero. Right. Then if you put your hand in that hand in room temperature water, it feels really hot mm -hmm. uh, because all of a sudden those sensors are waking up and, and saying alarm, alarm, something's going on. Mm -hmm. So this is a similar kind of thing. I hadn't really thing. thought of it that way, but that's an excellent way to think about it because that's exactly what our bodies do. We get, we survive. Right. We get used to our symptoms or we get used to our levels of hormone. Yeah. And then when we're given the normal amount, then it feels like too much. And then, but, but they adapt. Usually adaptation in this manner, for this type of thing, happens in, in three days. Well, and everybody and if it does it. I mean, if you've ever like <laughs> gone around the house looking for your hat, and somebody's laughed at you and said it's on your head, yeah. you know, or your glasses, people push their glasses up. Uh -huh. Once they they're up there them. for a few minutes, they don't feel them anymore. So then they're looking <laughs> for their glasses, and they're up there. Right, and you that's know. a way that we can not worry about the tiny things mm -hmm. that might be bothering us, right. and that we can get on with the things we were supposed to do, which was finding food, eating, making baby I mean, you know, the basic things so, so do of you, life. Do you warn people when you give them these medicines to say, over the next few days, if you find that you're thirsty a lot or if you're nervous or, or if, if your hot, pulse goes up a little bit mm -hmm, or, you, or you sweat, give it three or four days unless mm -hmm. it's really extreme? Yes and no. And people, it depends on my patient. Yeah. There are some patients <laughs> yes. that are suggestible. Yes, there are. And I know I can tell that in the first meeting. 
If they're suggestible, then they're going to get whatever I tell them they might get. Oh, yeah. I'm that way about food. Girls will say, smell this. I think it's bad. I'm like, no, I'll get sick. I mean, just whether I... You it, know it's bad. I already know. Yeah. Use your own judgment. If you think it's bad, throw it away. We'll buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not smelling it. Especially milk. You know, yeah. the top of the carton. Yeah. John yeah, usually but just I get me that to way. taste it. Yes. No, I wouldn't. No <laughs> Here, have some. Is yeah. this bad? <laughs> yeah. Taste it first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the t I'm the food tester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And so that's... <laughs> you're right. You're right. So where were we? Uh, we were talking about adaptation. And you tell them, but you have to be careful about what you tell who because some people get everything. Right. And, and yeah. that's just not healthy for me to say, oh, you could get blank, blank, blank. I mean, it's all in the consents. Oh, yeah. But. <laughs> you have a form on there that says hypochondriacal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but people who actually, they empathize so much. Yeah. They feel other people's pain. So I don't want them to sit outside in the waiting room with somebody who's having either imaginary or real symptoms, because they'll get them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like they can empathize or they can imagine it. Remember Dr. Marcus Welby syndrome? When no. you were in med school, there was, a, there was a TV show that was popular. It was on I every Monday night. It was show, Marcus but... Welby. And doctors were told Tuesday morning, you're going to get calls into the office from all oh, the yeah. people out there that are suffering from whatever Marcus saw. Well, he was night. actually teaching. Yeah. He was teaching people, and some of those calls were right. Absolutely. Some of the calls were, oh, I didn't know that was a disease. I didn't know why I felt like that, yeah. which was a great service to the, to the world. But, you know, when we're in med school, right. oh, my gosh, we get it all. Yeah. And I have... I have I have a goddaughter who's in med school, and she periodically gets it all. And my daughter did the same thing. Oh, I did yeah. the same thing. Every time we talk Counselors about a disease, do the same thing. I'd be like, <gasps> Every time oh, no. you study abnormal I've got psychology. That. I think I have MS, or I think I have whatever, you know, because well, you psychology, may feel weak at a certain point. I may think I have it, but I'm more likely to think my mother has it, or my <laughs> wife has it, or my next one. Oh, my God, we're studying this. That's what's wrong with that's, so, yeah, so Yeah, that's true. Yeah. She's but, narcissistic. So we tried to, I inform people based on who they are, based on how they handle yeah. information, based on how well I know them. I also, but I give them information like this on our website in these, right. in these talks so that at least they have the information. I just right. don't want them to imagine it's them. A little learning is a, a little, dangerous that's thing. Right. That's right. That's right. So many of the, many of these issues that are considered side effects mm -hmm. are a deal breaker for some doctors. They just go, oh, stop taking it. Well, but that's not exact. I mean, you have to hang in there and fix it. Especially heart arrhythmias or any kind of increase mm -hmm. in the heartbeat and the heart pulse rate. rate. Yeah. If there's arrhythmia, secondary, directly secondary to thyroid, then okay, right. the dose is too high or, the, or, you know, but you still need thyroid because thyroid protects against heart attack. Thyroid lowers your cholesterol. Which is thyroid, a catch-22 for right, those doctors. Right, but it's a matter of dose, yeah. and it's a matter of managing that dose and changing the type. It's not a matter of, oh, forget it. So you have to take the thyroid. Once you take thyroid, you need thyroid. Your thyroid gland is gone, mm -hmm. and it's not working in general. Mm -hmm. There's a few exceptions to that rule, but in general, that's, that's true. And you should always be on some dose of thyroid, but... It should be the type that doesn't cause you to have any arrhythmias. That's a very infrequent issue. Fast heart rate is more common, but an actual arrhythmia, if you're going to get arrhythmias from thyroid, you're going to get it soon, and we can stop it and change to something else. Right. But that's interesting in that that's one of the biggest problems I have with, with thyroid medication and going to the hospital for any reason. You were telling me about a female you, patient. That yeah, a female patient had had an, an arrhythmia and a fast heart rate, and she'd been on thyroid for a long time. Right. And then, but all the, all the cardiologists could see was thyroid causes arrhythmia, so that's all he was looking for. Right. So take, stop so taking thyroid. So he didn't look thyroid. beyond door right. number three. Which is, yeah. which is not, not good. Yeah. Because then you won't find the real reason for the arrhythmia. Right. And stopping the medication, I had the, I had an issue of, an, I have an issue of an arrhythmia, and I stopped thyroid for three weeks and it got worse right so that doesn't always always mm -hmm. track and in fact when it's a real arrhythmia usually it's something completely different it's a um, it's a little area of pulse usually it's atopic or a, a, a little area that gives you a heart rate that's different than the heart rate in your SA node like an electrical malfunction just yeah. in a set of cells yeah yeah. And it's and it's an area that has to be ablated with a laser. 
mm -hmm. or it has to be taken care of with medication but if it can't be done by a laser. Mm -hmm. So those are things that should be diagnosed. And I hate it that then all of a sudden it's, oh, it's your thyroid C. Besides the fact that, you know, that I, I feel somewhat accused when I shouldn't be, I just feel like they should go look for why the patient has the arrhythmia. Right. And that's important. So there's, that's an old wives' tale. But, but they're in a hurry and they're trying to do triage. I, know. I mean, the heart, you don't have a spare. The thyroid, you can kind of function <laughs> yeah. for a while mm -hmm. if it's malfunctioning. Mm -hmm. If the heart's malfunctioning, we got to do something right now. But if you have a heart attack it, and you take people off thyroid, it makes them worse. And that's and what they you don't want heal. people to know and remind doctors of. Right. They need yeah. to. If they they need thyroid, they're not going. Their thyroid's not going to reappear because you take them off when they have a heart attack. They need thyroid, okay. and they need it to be at a reasonable level so that their symptoms are. are gone from right. low thyroid. There are other systematic issues. Right. So we've done all this talking about low thyroid, low functioning or malfunctioning mm -hmm. thyroid. The thyroid can malfunction on the other end of the mm -hmm. spectrum as well and you can have one that's uh, hyperthyroid. overactive, hyperthyroid. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Hyperthyroid, hyperthyroidism is a more of an emergency than hypothyroidism. Okay. Because it is a, it speeds the heart rate up and makes you sweat. It's like if I gave you three times your normal dose of thyroid, but it's all the time. Yeah. And the thyroid's making this usually because there's an um, autoimmune, there's an antibody that attacks it and stimulates it. Right. And so, or there could be a mass in the thyroid. We look for masses to see if there's a mass that's just producing thyroid hormone. Is that like adrenaline? That no, comes out well, of the adrenal gland? I mean, is no. it a similar kind of? It's not adrenaline, but no, it, it's well, I just, know it's not, but I mean, but it's it thyroid as... working directly on the heart. Okay. And so it is, it is actually the thyroid itself. So the issue is you can have something called a hyperthyroid crisis where you have to s slow the heart rate with beta blockers. I was just going to ask you about beta yeah. blockers. So you have to slow the heart rate with beta blockers to slow it down, and that slows the sweating and slows everything else. Right. Sometimes you have to use PTU. There's all kinds of different treatments. There's, radi there's radiation. Mm -hmm. But basically, you're trying to destroy the thyroid to stop it because there's no other way to really stop it from hyper hyperactivity. Wow. So it's, it's, a, it's much more complicated than this, but it's not that part. Hyperthyroidism, right. that is in the world of the endocrinologist and they are experts in how to deal with that mm -hmm. and so and to, and the ENT surgeons so when that occurs rarely does it occur in my office because people are usually tired and exhausted and think it's their hormones and it's their thyroid too but I would immediately send them to yeah. an ENT and uh, an endocrinologist for treatment right. and that's something that has to be taken care of right away okay so last thing on thyroid is don't believe everything you hear about thyroid. Mm -hmm. I mean, many things are, are, are teachers teaching us things that were in the true back of their ago. mind true yeah. years ago, or they thought they were true years mm -hmm. ago, but they are not. It is an amazing hormone. It drops your cholesterol. Well, I mean, we used to treat high cholesterol with thyroid when thyroid was low. Cholesterol came right down with a thyroid replacement. You know, it, it's amazing how much how fast and how much medical science changes. Uh, it, it grows almost exponentially. As a matter of fact, our, our book is coming out in March and one of the, the questions about publishing the book that we had to answer was, do you put a science chapter in that sort of locks it in on, on paper? This is the data that we now have today. And in consultations with our publishers, we decided not to do that. What we're going to do instead is we will have a website for the book and there'll be a link to that, that website that will have an updated science chapter so that when science changes and when we know something new, we mm -hmm. can modify the data and always mm -hmm. keep it current uh, because this stuff just gets outdated sometimes almost overnight. And isn't it weird that people still remember stuff they learned in medical yeah. school 50 yeah. years ago that yeah. wasn't true? They still go back to that. It's kind of like going the olfactory sense, that memory, <laughs> it's like that one thing your your mm -hmm. teacher who was then 80 and now you're and now you're 60 yeah. you know ta taught you yeah. it still sticks Old wives, yes. and then yeah. all this new information doesn't always well it's change like george doctors. washington and the cherry tree everybody <laughs> knows that story and it's a complete farcical non-truth 
It yeah. never happened. It was an advertising You're scheme the history guy. <laughs> made up by a man named Parson Weems who was trying to sell little pamphlets and tracts to support himself. And it just became part of the ethos of Americana, and everybody knows it, and it didn't happen. I hate to liken medicine to that, but well, there are a lot of those things where, and, and yeah. thyroid's the brunt of many of these issues. I mean, it's like, just like estrogen, it's a woman's disease. Yeah. And oh, we're just not going to treat it. We're just going to we're just going to sweep it under the table. I'm not at risk because I'm a guy. Sorry, guys, but I'm a guy, doctor, and so it's not going to bother me. I'm not getting this. So <laughs> yeah. hey, I don't, I don't need it, to treat it. I'm not, I'm not it, at so risk. It doesn't hurt so, me at all. So you know, so it's one of those things that I think they just think we're joking or yeah. we're lying when we say we've got these symptoms. Yeah. And then well, that's they, that's, that's they go my back role. to that hysteria of the cycle. Right. You know, the whole labeling. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to us today and our conversation about thyroid and treatments. And, and everything else in the world and, and history. Else. <laughs> Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314 314- 993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.